So if you're not familiar with the Wowza streaming engine, this is the home interface when you first log into the web-based admin console or the Wowza streaming engine manager. What we're gonna do is actually go into our live application and set up the JVC camera with pretty much a one-click configuration to configure the JVC camera to send a live stream to the Wowza streaming engine live application. So right in here, I'm gonna select application, live application, and right here we have the incoming publisher section. Right here you can see our integration with all of these encoders and JVC of course is listed here. I'm gonna click on that. And right here it gives you some information as to the camera models that are actually supported. And right here I can go ahead and name my stream. I'm gonna go ahead and call this JVC2. And now I have to choose whether I want to choose an MPEG transport stream over a UDP port or via RTSP um, real-time streaming protocol. If I do select the M M MPEG transport stream UDP port, all I have to do is type in my port number and on the camera itself, I've configured the IP address of the Wowza streaming engine uh, to, to actually send that UDP signal directly into the Wowza streaming engine manager. If I did select the RTSP, I will pull that RTSP feed in. I would type in the IP address of my camcorder. In order to look at, one thing that I've done in configuring my JVC camera is I've plugged in the Wi-Fi dongle and then I've actually configured it to my lo local Wi-Fi access point. I can then access the UI for the JVC camera directly through my browser. In here I can actually view remotely and I can see the remote feed directly from my camera. I can also do a zoom, a dynamic zoom directly from the JVC camera itself. And I can also come in here and look at all my setup settings, my IP address, um, all the network settings, all from, from this interface. That, that information can also be accessed from the status screen directly on the JVC camera LCD panel as well. So I know my IP address, I've all, all come into my incoming publishers tab, and I'm actually transmitting the MPEG transport stream for today's demo over port 6666. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in, and all I'm gonna do is click on create connection. As soon as I do this, I can then go to my stream files and a stream file is created inside of my live application where I can actually see my jvc2.stream file. All I can do then is start the live stream on my camera and then I can actually choose the bitrate and the resolution that I want on the camera itself and send that live stream concurrently while I'm recording the local asset on the SSD card so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the menu. I'm gonna come down into the system configuration. I'm gonna come into my network settings. And right in here, I have a live streaming setup. We have a 0.8 megabyte per second stream that's coming in at pretty much 800K. I'm gonna go ahead and enable streaming. And as soon as I do that, you can also pre-configure one of the buttons on the JVC camera to click it once and it will actually enable live streaming. So I see my live feed is coming through. I'm gonna now pull up my JVC2 stream. Here you can see the stream URI. It's really looking for any IP address over this port number. I'm gonna click on test players. And right in here now, I can preview the stream directly from the camera. So we are getting a live stream directly from the, the JVC camera. It's using the encoder in the camera and it's actually sending a concurrent stream directly over a different bitrate and resolution at the same time that it's recording to the um, card itself. If for any reason my 4G or 3G dongle loses connection or my Wi-Fi loses connection, I have that, that hard, you know, hard media asset, that card directly on there as a backup for my VOD. But this allows me to send pretty much concurrent streams using both of those encoders. So you can see this is over RTMP. I can then switch to another protocol, Adobe HDS, and there you can see the Adobe HDS output directly from the camera. I can do this for all of these different protocols, all inside of test players in my live application. I can even send these links to my mobile device and preview these over Apple HLS on my iOS or Android devices. On Android, I can preview over RTSP. And I can also do this for MPEG Dash. So now all that's needed is you can enable Transcoder to actually transcode this to different bit rates and resolutions for a data bitrate delivery. You can create a smile file and then put that smile file inside of your player on your website and get true data bitrate delivery from the live stream from the camera. So JVC is really revolutionizing the way we're 
changing the encoding process. We're doing it directly on the camera, bypassing the need for a separate encoder. You can then send those concurrent streams, one to the local storage device, one to my live stream directly on Wowza's streaming engine, and be able to send that out and get good playback for your live streaming solution. And truly, this is kind of one-click functionality. When you um, have get the camera, you can do this directly over RTSP or over MPEG transport stream over UDP and TCP on the camera itself. Very quick to configure and set up. I suggest you get the camera and try it with Waza streaming engine. Extremely easy to use. Thank you very much.